Victoria Wood was, in my opinion, one of the best comedians of all time. She was a songwriter, pianist, serious actress as well, an incredibly talented lady. This is 100 Years, 100 Objects, stories from the collections of Lancaster City Museums. I'm Millie Wellborn, a museum assistant for Lancaster City Museums, and today we'll be looking at the stories behind another object from our collections as we celebrate 100 years of our museums. In this episode, we will be looking at an image of a familiar face, someone who could be seen on Morecambe Prom and on the TV in the same day, and someone who many local residents will remember with a smile. Today's object is a photograph of Victoria Wood. The photograph is a large print of an image which was captured by photographer Andy Hollingworth in 1997 at the Birmingham Hippodrome Theatre. The whole print measures about 40 centimetres wide by 50 centimetres high and features a thick white border with the image of wood in a square towards the top, making it resemble an oversized Polaroid photograph. Victoria is shot from slightly above and she stands with her arms crossed looking up at the camera with a slight grin on her face. Her clothes are casual, a Tintin t-shirt, jeans and trainers. She is standing in a bright light but the background and shadows are almost totally black picking out Victoria in high contrast. We spoke to Mel Cookson-Carter, museum manager at Lancaster Maritime Museum, who remembers meeting Victoria Wood and loving her comedy, to tell us more about this photograph and the fascinating woman it portrays. She started by telling us about the photographer that created this photograph and how it has made its way into the museum collection. This particular photograph was featured in an exhibition at the Maritime Museum that was called Grin Up North. It featured northern comedians, including Victoria, Norman Wisdom, Ken Dodd, Peter Kay, Eric Morecambe. And following the exhibition, the photographer donated this particular picture, along with another one of Norman Wisdom, sat on a staircase uh, with his classic grin across his face into our collection. The photographer was Andy Hollingworth. He's a British photographer who began documenting comedians in 1995. Andy's inspiration was a childhood memory, particularly of his dad laughing at comedians on TV. I think that's something we can all identify with. Andy has become most renowned for his portraits of celebrities from the world of comedy. His work is now really widely recognised as a really important archive of British comedy. In fact, his photography is held in museum and gallery collections across the country, including ours. This particular photo was taken by Andy at the Hippodrome Theatre in Birmingham on the 3rd of May in 1997. Over half a million people packed into 200 venues throughout Britain during 1997 to see what was hailed as Victoria Wood's best show ever. This huge tour included an unprecedented 15-night sellout run at the Royal Albert Hall in London. Victoria Wood was born in Prestwich in 1953. Today, Prestwich is in Greater Manchester, although in the 1950s it was part of Lancashire, so Wood was always a Lancashire lass. But many Morecambe residents will know that she had another connection to this area. Well, Victoria and her partner, Geoffrey Durham, the magician who most people will remember as the great Soprendo, who later became her husband, rented a first floor flat for about £13 a week on Oxford Street near the bus station in Morecambe. It was there that Victoria really began to develop her comedy and both of them worked in and around Morecambe and became really familiar faces. As things got better for the couple, as they earned more money, they traded their Oxford Street flat for one with a much better view that actually overlooked the bay, and eventually they owned a home in Silverdale. What we're told is that when her best friend Julie Walters was in the town, the pair would go people-watching around Morecambe, and specifically in local cafes. The inspiration for Victoria's best-known comedy sketch, Two Soups, with its befuddled, elderly, hard-of-hearing waitress allegedly came during her regular visits to the Lubin Café in Morecambe. For those people not familiar with Victoria Wood's vast catalogue of work, 
we asked Mel to give us a brief rundown of this fascinating woman. Victoria Wood was, in my opinion, one of the best comedians of all time. As well as being a comedian, she was also an incredible serious actress as well. She was a songwriter, pianist, an incredibly talented lady. Victoria Wood had quite a tough childhood socially, insofar as she was quite an isolated child from her peers. And it was only when she joined Rochdale Youth Theatre Workshop where she finally felt that she was sort of in the right place. She said, I knew what I was doing. I was a bit of an odd child too. Um, And so there's always something that derives from individuality that sort of formulates that person into how they are in adulthood. Particularly when you watch her mockumentary sketch from 1985 about Chrissy, the young swimmer who's preparing to swim the channel. You just can't help but hurt for her lonely optimism, that kind that children like her and me sort of clinged to. And you realise that Chrissy must have been drawn from Victoria's own childhood. Her talent was discovered on the TV show New Faces, which a lot of people might remember back in the 1970s. From then on, she really established herself as a comedy star, going through to winning BAFTAs for her TV sketch series, Victoria Wood, as seen on TV. People might also remember her from the war-based drama Housewife 49. Sadly, Victoria died in April 2016. Mel went on to tell us about her memories of Victoria Wood and her favourite aspects of Wood's comedy. I met Victoria several times as she had a holiday home in the village where I lived and worked in the Lake District. And quite often I would watch as she'd sort of walk through the village and people would just stare at her and they would nudge each other. Others would go over for a photograph. I always felt so under pressure for her to always be Victoria Wood, the comedian that everyone knows. But she was always really kind, always polite, really quite shy and this photograph is really quite an intimate photograph of someone who is renowned as being shy. She didn't really write for herself, she had the gift of writing for others. She always cast herself as the straight guy around whom all of the rest of the cast would sort of dance her comedy in their own individual unique ways. She always had a core cast of northern comic actors Julie Walters, Celia Imrie, Duncan Preston, Kate Robbins. She always wrote in a very specific style that contrasted moments of hilarity with scenes that were really quite dark and emotional. With Victoria's comedy, it's not gag after gag, unless, of course, you've seen her live, which was just hilarious from beginning to end. Her satirical language was soft and silly, You know, she's the woman that rhymed meekly and weakly in the ballad of Barry and Frieda, but also really wry and sharp. But importantly as well, she was never vulgar. She was never expletive. The raciest it got was thinking that Coco Van was loving a lorry. (laughs) My my favourite sketches always featured Julie Walters and Victoria Wood together. And if I had to choose one, I think it would probably be the department store cafe sketch where Julie Walters says, never touch prawns. Do you know, they hang around sewage outlet pipes, treading water with their mouths open. They love it when Victoria Wood's character asks aren't they an aphrodisiac? Julie Walters would say, well, I wouldn't put it past them. And uh, after all, who hasn't got frustrated looking for a side-widening thermal body belt? Victoria Wood often worked with a band of other Northern comics, and the exhibition that this photograph was originally shown in contained many more. Mel explained why she thought so many comedians are Northerners. Being a Northerner myself, I can can say this, but people in the North, we, we walk with our heads up, We don't just see other people, we look, we notice things, and I think that's where most northern comedians get their material. I think that people who live further south have so much of a busier pace of life that they're swept up in the pace of it all and don't always take that opportunity to observe. Not not everyone, of course. I always think that people are like the landscapes in which they grow up. 
and the topography of the north is mountains, moors, dales, and completely full of character and spirit, which I think is just like its people. Northern dialect will always be funny to me. The song Let's Do It really wouldn't have the same impact if, if sung in a different accent. I think as Northerners, we're, we're really happy to ridicule ourselves. We never take ourselves too seriously. We make fun of each other and we can take it on the chin. It takes a lot to offend us. Most comedians, like Victoria Wood, are working class too. You only have to think about dinner ladies, for example. We all know a Twink, a Stan, a Brenda. Some of the funniest people I know working factories and mills. And when some of those factories and mills closed, they they felt bereft, like their family had been broken up. And there's something about working in that kind of environment and the types of relationships that are built there that makes people lose their inhibitions and tend to overshare, which really makes for a holy grail of comedy. Traditional industries are diminishing, but attitudes and cultures take so much longer to fade. And for every low, there is an equal high. For every shadow, there's a beacon of light. And the toughness and grit of the North is levelled out by our sense of humour and our kindness. We work hard. We play hard. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of 100 Years, 100 Objects. We do hope you will listen to some of our other episodes, where we will be discussing everything from seals to ancient surgical equipment.